your opinion of this Super Bowl, um, having seen the Chiefs just recently, you saw them hoist the Hunt Trophy um, and beat the beat the Bengals. Your your two cents on on this game, Iron Eagle, that you're calling for the world? Yeah, had Philadelphia late in the year that Week 18 matchup against the Giants, where they just needed the win to seal the number one seed. Yes, uh, they were treating the game seriously, and it was Jalen Hurts coming back, which was a big part of it. Uh, we had talked to him about the shoulder issue, and there were reservations. He was not necessarily saying that he's 100% and and everything's full go. He was adjusting to the new normal. He's had some time since that. Obviously, we've seen them in the postseason and their two victories cruise to the Super Bowl. I just like their group. I like their confidence, what Lane Johnson has done to just be in there. Uh, that's inspirational. Their running game is for real. They've got big time weapons on the outside, and in AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, Goddard has proven himself as a reliable target. And then defensively, the, the fact that they can get to the quarterback nearly at a historic level, second only to the Chicago Bears from their Super Bowl year. The secondary makes plays. I I like their team. I like how they've been built. Uh, they've been built the right way. It's been a nice mix. They put a lot of faith in Hurts, and he's proven them correct. Kansas City has a certain confidence to them because they've been there. They've done it. They've got the experience. Mm-hmm. They have Andy Reid who can scheme it up. You give him an extra week to, to come up with some, some plans in the lab, and you know he'll have some funky stuff. I don't think they have the mystique they once had just – based on the fact that Tyreek Hill isn't there. Some of their speed will not be a part of it with McCole Hardman placed on IR. Defensively, they came to play against Cincinnati. Chris Jones was tremendous. Frank Clark was excellent. They got a lot of pressure. Uh, They're banged up in the secondary, but they withstood it. My sense Mm -hmm. is that Philadelphia has got a real belief, and I think they have the kind of squad that, that can win the whole thing. Yeah, they have, certainly have the type of squad to turn um, a somewhat compromised Mahomes uh, yeah. into the last time we saw Mahomes in the Super Bowl where he had a, a toe injury. Now, I mean, the ankle, uh, despite him looking hobbled, didn't, uh, uh, when it all came down to it, it did, it did not hinder his ability to do the Mahomes-type stuff. But they certainly have the horses to chase Mahomes around like the Bucks did a couple of years ago, Ian. That's for sure. They do. Yeah, they do. And and that did pop up in, in my brain just trying to prepare for this and jotting some notes down this week. CBS had that Super Bowl. We worked on the pregame show. Uh, I definitely was intoxicated by <laughs> Kansas City's offense. Yes. And the fact that the Brady story at that time wasn't complete and i thought it was a little bit of a pipe dream obviously the way that game went it uh, changed a lot of perceptions and changed uh, legacies to some degree Mm -hmm. with that said i think they downplayed the mahomes injury that week leading up to the game here there's nothing to hide we saw it Uh, he had a tough time getting back to the sideline after series and yet when it was time to go and time to do it. He could still sling it, and they protected him well enough. I just think this Philadelphia defense brings a whole different dynamic getting to the quarterback, and, and that would concern me. When you, concern me. When you speak to Sirianni, what's he like? Um, is he anything close to the Sirianni we've seen on the sidelines where he's just saying it with his chest and just, you know, um, getting after it in a way that you don't see many NFL head coaches, Ian? No. No, not not in the production meetings. He's he's a really likable dude. He's uh, very much a, a regular guy that I think made good on this passion. He comes from a football family. His dad was a longtime coach. Brothers have been longtime coaches. So this has been in his blood forever. And he lives it. He breathes it. Uh, cares a lot. He's he's a very likable guy. I think. He does become something else on the sideline, and there is a chip on the shoulder, and there's something that has fueled him through the years. You've got the other angle, which I'm sure will pop up quite a bit this week in some stories. Andy Reid did not retain him. He was on the Kansas City coaching staff, Mm -hmm. and Andy Reid has said, hey, he got very high marks, but I had somebody else in mind for the job. It all worked out for Nick. He ended up 
going to the Chargers and then learning under Frank Reich. And, and that became a very important relationship in his football career. But I'm sure that's something that's fueled him as well, deep, deep, deep down, that uh, he was in Kansas City and the new coaching regime led by Andy Reid didn't, didn't want him to be a part of it. So whatever motivates you, I, I think there are personas that pop up based on what we see on television, and I get it. That's often all we get for, for a lot of the fans. That's what they see, and that's what they base their opinion on. Nick is, is an affable dude, and, and uh, yeah, really happy for him to, to accomplish this in two years, to, to take this and move it to a place where they can win a championship is is rather impressive. Ian Eagle calling into the Rich Eisen Show in advance of calling Super Bowl 57 for the world, the international feed. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.